Hello all, welcome to AuraTrainers.com. In this session, we'll discuss about performing work order import using FBDI approach. Let's get into agenda. I'll try to understand what is work order, what are the data migration approaches we have in Oracle Fusion, how to create a work order from user interface, and the steps to perform work order import using FBDI, the interface error and base table details, and how to be versus the interface tables. So what is a work order? It's a kind of a document that conveys the users to create a particular item following certain steps. So generally, like whenever you, you want to create a particular item, or you want to manufacture an item in a particular company, every item or maybe a particular, particular process, an item requires a process that may require resources, that may require some set of approvals, that may require a quantity to be provided, an amount to be incurred. So kind of certain set, set of steps will be there to manufacture product. So this is, that is all about a work order. So it will have a resources, it will have a operations, it will have a supervisor, it will have a ETA, nothing but like when to start, when to end, how much quantity you want to provide. This all stuff will be there in the work order. Okay. Now let's understand the data migration approaches we have for work order. So there are three approaches we have available. First one is like a FBDI, the one which we'll be discussing, we'll be discussing in our session today. And the REST API approach, it is not fully available for the work order purpose. So you just have only partial one. So like Oracle is trying to create the required web services in the near future. But as of now, it has only a partial set of web services using which you can just create a work order material transaction, but you cannot fully create a work order. Other option is ADFDI. And again, it is not fully available for the purpose of creation, but it is only available for the purpose of correcting a work order. Okay. Now, how do we create a work order from the user interface? You have to navigate to supply chain execution. In that, you have to click on work execution. Once you click on work execution, you'll be navigating to this particular page. In this task list under the manage production, the first task is manage work orders. Click on the manage work orders. You'll be navigated to this particular page. Under this one, in the search results, you just click on a plus symbol. There you have an option to create a different type of work order. In our example, we have chosen standard work order and it requires two mandatory attributes. One is item. Other one is quantity. You can either click on save and edit or you can cl click on save and close. So these are the set of steps required to create a work order from the user interface. Okay. So now what we do is we'll try to understand how to create a work order using FBDI approach. Ideally, like we know that like every, most of the FBDIs require a four step approach. The first one is get the template, then fill the data template and generate the zip file. Then the load the data into the interface table. And final one is load the data from load the data from the interface table to base table. So let's get into the first step. Get the FBDI template. Always based on your ERP version, get the appropriate template. And in this case, observe carefully that this particular work order import comes under manufacturing. Under that, you have a link called work order import. And once you click on that, you'll find an XLSM template called work order template.xlsm. Get that one. And then it may it will have multiple set of sheets. We'll discuss in detail which sheets we'll be working on it. So this is a template, and you know, like uh, here I highlighted which particular sheets will be populating. We just want to populate only work order batches as well as work order header. We don't want to populate the remaining set of sheets. As of now, we just want to show a very simple way of uploading a work order. So only populate work order batches as well as work order header. Okay, and then the next step is in the second step. Once you fill up the data for the two sheets, click on generate CSV file, which will be available in the instruction and CSV generation. Once you click on this one, it will generate a zip file. Inside that, it will have a CSV files. It will have a Z it will this particular step will generate a zip file. In that zip file, you'll have a CSV files. Okay. And now in the third step, we'll be loading this particular, we will be loading the zip file which was generated in the second step using this particular third step. You have to invoke a process called load interface file for import. And in that you have a, you have to mention the import process name as import work orders and the data file as nothing but the zip file which you got from the second step that you have to mention. Once you click on submit, this particular process will run. And if it's successfully completed, you can proceed with the next step, the fourth step. So in the fourth step, this is a place where you perform import. You have to invoke import work orders. Yeah. So this is, a, I mean, the slides got, you know, like a little bit uh, swap. So you have to invoke a job called import work orders. In this, you have to mention a batch name. This batch name comes from your sheet, like uh, which you have filled up and mention the batch name. And uh, if the import work order process is su completed successfully, 
you just get the log file and in that log file you'll have the information about what is the work order number what is the type and what is the item whether it is processed successfully or not you'll have everything in that right and you can also observe the same thing here in the log file here work order number type item and you can also validate the same thing from the ui also using the task manage work orders and there you can find out your work order number and the respective item and the status of, and the type of the work order which you are trying to import. So in our sample today, we'll discuss about importing a work order of type standard as well as non-standard both. Okay, so now coming to the table details. The first one is work order batches. The table details, the table name is wi underscore int underscore batches b. Next one is work order header, wi underscore work orders underscore int. And the error table for both of them is wi i underscore int underscore errors. So you can segregate the error with respect to interface table based on the table name information in the int errors table. You'll have error message column as well as error code column in the int errors. So that's a one stop, the single table which has all the information about the error information for your import. Coming to the master detail data, like uh, item masters, inventory org master, work order, which is a very important table which we are, we dis we are discussing today, wa underscore work orders underscore b. Okay, and the work order definitions, so like you can also refer here as of now in our particular session today, we are not discussing much on the work order definition. Of course, like uh, your particular work order creation depends upon the work order definitions. Okay. The final step is how do we purge an interface table? So the purging is a little bit different process in this particular work order. So you have to navigate to work execution. In this one, you can observe the last one called purge records from interface in the import section. So in the import task list, so you have to click on import records from interface. Once you click on that, it will you will be navigating to this particular section. And here in the interface name, you can mention the appropriate one, whether you want to purge only this specific thing or work order, or you want to just, you want to purge all the set of records which are relating to all this one, okay? Once you select all, and then you can just mention the batch name, and you can then click on submit. This particular process will purge all the data in the interface table, okay? So now we'll navigate to UI and let us create the work order from the user interface, right? So click on the home. So time being, I'll execute this one also. Yep. Supply chain execution. And this particular first step is for the purpose of creating work definition, but we want to concentrate only on the work order. I'll click on work execution. And click on the task list. Manage work orders. And here in the search result, click on play symbol and cl click on create standard work order. And this requires an item. So I'll try to choose an item which I already have in my example. So I'll choose the first one. Okay, so I can mention the quantity one. You can either click on save and close or save and edit. edit. So I'll just simply click on save and close. So this step will auto generate a work order number based on your configuration. What is a, yeah. So now the work order number is wo-002 iPhone 1056. This is a work order which got just created just now. Okay, so this is how we can create a work order from the UI. Now the next step is how do we import a work order from the FBDI, right? So let us get into the template. So this is our template, work order template .xlsm. The first sheet you have to populate is work order batches. I'll mention the batch name like this, xxwo underscore b underscore w double zero two. You can mention the batch code batch name, batch description. You can have a different, but as of now, I'm just publishing same in all these three fields. And next one is work order header. So you have to, it's like a, there's a parent parent child linkage between work order batch as well as work, work order header. So I'll mention the batch code here, 002. And now work order, work order header number, which is a unique field for each record. So I'll mention three and four here. And the next one is work order number. So my work order header number and uh, work order number, I want to keep it as same so that I mentioned the same, same one here. Then the organization code, the inventory organization code, then the inventory number, uh, nothing but item number, planned, your, like a, what is the start quantity, start date and completion date. Completion date is generally not mandatory, but it's okay. And then here, if you observe the care, the very important field is called the work order type. 
the first item i want to go with non standard one the second item i want to go with standard one and if you are working with a standard work order make sure that you have to populate these two important fields the one is work order definition and other one is the lo explosion so work definition for the work definition work definition value is a work definition code not the work definition name so it is or underscore main in my scenario and the explosion value i have to go with y okay in the remaining field nothing to populate default scheduler just mention default scheduler and there is no other field to populate okay that's it so now go to the instruction first of all save the file okay generate csv file so this will generate a zip file now i'll try to replace the existing one which i already have it in my system okay so click on save okay and you could see that 29th march is the latest file which i have generated just now now click on the task list navigator tools schedule processes schedule new process load interface file for import click on okay this require two input parameters the first one is import work orders import work orders now select the zip file upload a new file choose work order batches dot zip open okay click on submit and let's see it takes couple of minutes or seconds based on the data as well as based on your instance performance and parallelly we'll see the bi also have a couple of queries to get the data from the interface table as well as base table okay so this is a batch which is in ready state now i hope this is successfully completed for import I'm mean, loading the data into interface table. Yes, and now click on schedule new process, and now mention the job name import work orders. This require batch ID or a number as an input. So it will automatically come if you at all if you have if your batch is ready for processing. Just select the batch and click on submit. And now we can just refresh from the backend, and the status of the batch will be changed from ready to next process. Like um, ready now, it initially it is ready. Let's see. Yep, now it is an in process. And then finally, if it is completed, this will be purged from the interface table. If at all, if it fails, it will be available in the error table or a interface table with the completed errors. And using that, you can easily understand, using, when using this error information, you can find out the error detail from the error table and find out what is the error reason behind it, okay? Yep, it succeeded. And you can observe here again. I'll just click on refresh. And the batch is no more available in the interface table. And you can also see that particular work order number, which was imported just now. Work order number 003 as well as 004, which got imported just now. OK. And what we can do, we can check the log file. This is a very important step. Check the log file. It has only one attachment, which is a text file, which has a clear information which work order, which item number, what's the type, what is the quantity, what is the start date, and what is the end date, and what is the status of that, we'll have all the information here. This is a batch code, and two work orders of this particular batch got imported. And now we'll try to finally validate from the UI also. Click on Home, Work Execution. And you can simply click on here, this one. 
unreleased right and you can just see the work order here 003 004 which was important just now okay so this is a process of creation of work order from the ui and also we have seen the process of creating a work order using fda approach thank you